focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. The National Stock Exchange of India has been actively involved with initiatives to educate the young generation of our country on the importance of financial management. One such initiative is NSE Finway that focuses on educating and advising the young workforce of the country on wealth management to enhance financial literacy and to empower Insurance them. Insurance is for protection and investment is for growth. Another program facilitated by NSC IPFT is NSC Financial Quest. This inter-school financial quiz contest goes an extra mile by educating the young students on fundamentals of finance. On the buzzer, what is this? It's the formula for the simple interest. Simple interest is the right answer. Under the NSC Financial Quest Base Camps banner, the program engages students around the year through workshops on various topics, projects, interactive videos, and quizzes. The capital is bouncing checks of Pan Am. Plus 75, Akash. Plus 75. To facilitate these two programs, NSC, along with CNBC TV18, has traveled across the country to bridge the wide knowledge gap in terms of finance. In this episode of NSC Finwiz, we are all set to achieve our objectives once again by gauging young professionals in a new city. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of NSC Finwiz powered by CNBC TV18 and I'm your host Nitya Balakrishnan. Today in this super special episode, my team and I have decided to literally take you to the skies inside the hangars of one of India's most popular airlines in the country's busiest city, the Jet Airways Hangar in Mumbai. Jet Airways is one of India's largest airlines and operates over 300 flights daily to numerous destinations worldwide. Incorporated in April 1992, the airline began full-fledged operations in 1995 and added international flights to its wing in 2004. The airline went public in 2005 and in 2007 it acquired Air Sahara. NSC Finwiz, along with the experts, visited Jet Airways in Mumbai to address the significance of financial literacy and wealth management to its employees with the theme, Dreams Come True. Financial planning is a key aspect in everyone's life and therefore it is important to be financially literate. Financial literacy is of utmost importance to ensure the country's economic growth and prosperity and needs to be imbibed in daily lives of young professionals. Every individual having an income is a potential saver and every saver a potential investor. Hence it is important that the investor is financially literate which means that one should have a general understanding of key economic parameters and certain terminologies commonly used namely rate of inflation, GDP, interest rates, sensex, etc. which help them to understand and use various avenues available for them to invest uh, namely into retirement funds, tax saving funds or otherwise etc. Wealth management is quite important for youngsters such as me who have started earning at an early age. The sooner you start investing, the more time your money has to get compounded. I would, I would like to ask uh, the experts about mutual funds, the different types and what would be good for young investors. Uh, what would be a better high risk option, low risk option, things like that. The, I feel that there is not enough education given about this subject so any points about that would be much appreciated. Okay, I have just started my career so I currently do not invest and uh, I hope to learn a lot from today's uh, session to invest in the future. Hello and welcome to season 4 of NSE Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 and I'm your host Nitya Balakrishnan. Today we're programming from inside Jet Airways hangar in Mumbai and I have two very special guests on the show Mr. Kalpesh Ashar and Mr. Gurjendra Kothari. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, when we talk about multiplying your money, that does not come as naturally to most of us Indians as making that money. So we make that money, we believe in savings, but do we actually prudently invest? So my question to you, Kalpesh, first is, are you seeing an increasing uh, awareness amongst youngsters, especially today, when you talk about investing prudently? And if you talk about a right age, what would you think of? First of all, the youth of today is very privileged because there are so many options available to 
all of us today that we can actually invest as per our profile. And that is what we as financial advisors and planners always tell people that investments should be according to your profile. There's no use in comparing others' profiles or others' wealth or others' investments with yours because what might be good for others might not be good for you and vice versa. So always invest according to your profile. Mm -hmm. And the second part, a simple one-line answer and we'll elaborate as the show progresses, when to start, it's when you get your first salary of your working career. So the simple mantra is start early. So the earlier the better is what Kalpesh is indicating. But here I'd want you to jump in, uh, Mr. Virendra, on the power of compounding. Now, simply put, if I were a 25-year-old setting aside about 10,000 rupees per month, uh, you know, till my age of retirement, so-called till 60, what's the kind of corpus I'll get vis-a-vis -vis missing out on the first 10 years and starting investing the same amount when I'm 35 instead? Absolutely. Let me just give you an example which you rightly say, uh, which you ask, you know. Suppose if I'm asking you to invest 1 lakh rupees per annum, which is hardly 8,000 rupees a month, mm -hmm. and you're 25 right now, all the way till 60, you would end up getting 5 crores rupees at retirement. Okay, just 1 lakh per annum. One lakh per year. Should you miss that by one year, or you delay by one year, you didn't start at 25, because let's say on your birthday, I told you, start this, on this birthday, invest 1 lakh rupees. You know, Gajendra, this birthday, let me buy this wonderful Royal en Enfield bike which has come into the market. How does it really make a difference? I'll start from next year. This is our typical habit, right? Absolutely. So you delayed by one year. You thought it doesn't really matter much. But in the end, you won't get that 5 crore. You will get actually 60 lakhs less. You will only get 4 crore 40 lakhs. 1 lakh, 1 year delay, 1 Royal Enfield is now costing you 2 Mercedes cars. Are you getting the, the, the cost of delay? That is what we don't realize. And that is how numbers add up, actually. Yeah, you did say Royal Enfield and Mercedes. You literally spoke our language. Where else do you think one can park funds? Because at the end of the day, all of us are interested about significant returns. So if you want good returns for your investment. Yeah, so the, the simple answer comes back to the concept of personal financial planning. Once you know your financial profile, and if everything is in place, you have a good healthy savings, you have a good healthy uh, contingency fund, you have your insurance in place, then the best way to look at it is to set goals. If you have long-term goals, look at equity because there is nothing which beats equity in long-term returns. Uh, Gajendra gave a very super example of how equity grows. The power of compounding is magical. But in equity, Everyone is not an expert. And that is where mutual funds come into the picture very prominently. And mutual funds allow you to start with as low as an amount of 500 rupees per month to get your feet into equity. There are mutual funds which let you invest in debt, which has got no component of equity, but is a better option than bank FDs. So look at mutual funds to give you better returns. There is no complex issues about mutual funds. It's as simple as that. If you don't know a subject, you are asking a professional to handle that for you mm -hmm. at the least minimum cost. Absolutely. Now, before we actually go in depth into mutual funds, which uh, happens in the next segment, Gajendra, if I asked you about a healthy portfolio, what are the different asset classes that one can consider and what would you think is the right balance? And in this, a lot of us believe that insurance is savings as well. So, would you like to, uh, you know, elaborate on whether insurance should be part of this asset portfolio or should it be outside? So, you know, when, when we invest money, we cannot put all our eggs in one basket, you know. So, when we have a meal also, in our meal we have dal, chapati, rice, sweets, curd and that's why it's called a balanced meal because it has component of, you know, protein, carbohydrate, fats and everything. Same thing goes for our investments also. No matter how much uh, you know, one asset class we may like, it, it's not wise to put all our, all our money in that asset class. At the end of the day, your preference of investments has to be based on what goals you have sure. and what risk profile you carry. On that note, it's time to slip into a quick breather right here on NSE Finviz, but stay tuned. A whole lot of focus on mutual funds when we come back from this short break.
Welcome back to NSE Finviz in conversation with Gajendra Khatari and Mr. Kalpesh Ashar here at Jet Airways in Mumbai. If I talk about our core topic for today, which is mutual funds, talk to us really about how many of us understand the risk that's involved in investing in the equity market in mutual funds. Because when a whole host of people are asked, do you invest in the equity market? We just saw a show of hands. Everybody is risk averse and they think this is not the best proposition. Your comments on it. Now, what is basically mutual funds? I think many people are confused or just scared about mutual funds for no reason. Mutual funds is basically a pool of resources which we all retail investors according to our capacity and levels at a point of time hand over in a staggered manner or a lump sum basis to an asset management company. In that you have a further segregation. You want to take risk, put it in equity. Talk to me really about ELSS as a tool for tax benefits as well as you know when you are looking to park your funds in the equity slash mutual fund market. Absolutely. So many of us, uh, <clears throat> when we talk about Section 80C, there are few uh, investments which come quickly to our mind. Uh, the first of them being PPF, Public Provident Fund. Second is insurance premiums. And uh, ELSS is one of the other option which is not very common. Okay, It's nothing but tax saving mutual funds. Now why government has given this as an option? Because government of India wants you to try out this route to invest in mutual fund. And that is why they are giving this kind of incentive to you that if you put up to 1.5 lakh rupees, you will get tax benefit. Now these tax saving mutual funds are not different from normal mutual fund. There are same mutual funds, but because you are getting tax benefit under section 80C, there is a clause and the clause is that it has to come with a three year lock in. So you cannot remove the money before three years. Interestingly, Shraddha Master, who is uh, in the guest experience team here, has a question that now most of us want to understand. We have picked up on the ABCs of mutual funds. But what Shraddha wants to know is there are many mutual fund schemes in the market. How do you compare and identify the best one to park your funds in? And that's pretty much what all of us really want to know. I always believe in the power of simplicity. You know, if you really want to create wealth, go with the most simple option. And in, in mutual funds, particularly equities if you are investing for long term, go with something called diversified equity fund. Stop there. In diversified equity fund, the fund manager choose and pick where he wants to invest. You don't have to take any call on sectors or themes. He decides which is the best investment right now and he takes call. So in mutual funds, we have sector funds, we have mid cap funds, we have large cap, we have small caps and all of us get confused. But to most of our uh, clients, we always tell go for plain vanilla equity fund and you'll be absolutely fine. If you hold for long term, you'll be able to beat the market, you know. So don't confuse it and don't have too many funds in your portfolio. Maybe two or three funds in your portfolio is good enough. I've seen many portfolios which have 10, 20, 30 funds. And one fund itself invests in 40 companies. If you're having 10, 15 funds, you're actually owning the entire market. So, no, imagine when you have the entire market, can you then beat the market? Mm -hmm. It's not possible. So, you know, two or three funds, good enough. Thank you. Now, if I can have Chinmay, who's in the cargo department here, 27 years of age. It's a very interesting question once again because given the current market scenario, you're talking about demonetization, India sitting at the cusp of demonetization, suddenly real estate, gold, don't look like the apt vehicles to park your funds. And what he basically wants to know is are mutual funds the safe haven for investment for the next decade? Okay, uh, if you see the evolution of mutual funds, from where it was probably in 2003 or 4 and where we are today. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to stress on the importance of mutual funds, how it's evolved and where it stands today in the, in the financial scenario. Today mutual funds are in the vicinity, the total funds managed in the mutual fund industry is 17 lakh crore. In fact, it is today or yesterday that figure has come out. And we get uh, almost a monthly inflow of 4,000 crore in SIPs itself, mm -hmm. which supports the market. Now, if you understand more in detail what has happened in the last two months in the market, is that the foreign investors have withdrawn heaps of money. So that had brought the market down. 
it was the mutual fund industry, the SIPs, the regular flows, which was at an historical high, which supported the Indian markets. If not for this domestic flows, we would have been much lower than where we are presently. It's up and growing. Linking it, I would say, remotely to demonetization, it's just a matter of coincidence that November and December have again seen the months of demonetization, have seen highest inflows into equity and debt funds. Because demonetization as such would not affect mm -hmm. the mutual fund uh, investment pattern because you don't have any cash outlets coming into the, the mutual, fund, mutual industry. fund industry. So people who were aware of it, in fact, have reinforced their own faith and belief that now the other assets are falling apart. This is the way to go. And you will see over a period of time that everybody who has now put in their money into the banks, at some point of time, they will look for alternates. So mutual funds is here to stay. It is us, the domestic investors, who have to propel it to greater heights. We can't wait for the foreigners to dictate us. And on that note, time to slip into a quick breather right here on NSE Finviz. But stay tuned. It's rapid fire with employees of Jet Airways on the other side. It's so good to have you back here on NSE Finbase. And let's throw the floor open to employees of Jet Airways. Request you to please raise your hands, identify yourselves, and throw your questions to one of our guests. Hello. Hi, sir. Good evening. My name is Chandra Shekhar. Okay. Uh, my question is, when we talk about investment and when we talk about SIPs, okay, so I wanted to understand, talking about me personally, I can save in a month, a monthly amount of somewhere around 20K, okay. So I want to know, how many, I have already started investing in mutual funds, okay. So how many SIPs can I buy into my portfolio, that is one. Second, I want to know, when I at the same time invest in PPF, then what are the benefits, the pros and cons for mutual funds versus PPF? Okay, uh, first of all, when you're already doing some SIPs, right? Yes. Okay, so SIPs, when we say there's no limit to how many SIPs, but, like Gajinder explained in the first segment, that you are just multiplying the same thing again and again. Hmm. So, too much diversification is not good. Okay. Mutual funds, by their own inherent features, is a diversified product. So, if you see a fund, it comprises of 40 to 50 stocks which it has bought. Yes, sir. But PPF is a brilliant diversification into your debt component if you are doing it. This is a question regarding the taxation. Okay, uh, government taxation which is going to be implemented in this coming year, a person investing in goods and supplies, will that be affected? So when you invest in equities or a company which is into logistics. Correct. What you are buying is the share of a company. Okay, that's an equity investment. As per current regulations or current rules, equity investments after one year are all tax free. So if you have invested and after one year you made decent profit, entire profit is yours. You don't have to share with the government. We don't know what will happen in the budget. Correct. So it's not, I mean, I can't have any guesses, you know, but we'll have to wait for budget to see what, if, if they at all make any changes. But this is nothing to do with GST, what you may be thinking about. Okay, nothing. Nothing to do with, GST affects your daily purchases and sales and transactions. I'm talking, we are talking about here investments, you know, so this is completely different. Okay, thank you. Well, on that note, we're absolutely timed out on this episode. Uh, Kajendra Kutari and Kalpesh Ashar, thank you so much for joining us. And from the entire team that put together this episode of NSE Finwiz, thank you for watching and have a good weekend. I think all young uh, employees like me really should get the right knowledge, not only knowledge, but the right knowledge of where to invest. I think we all are really afraid of the word risk. And I think, you know, sessions like this, which kind of, you know, inform you where to invest in the right way, I think uh, it's, it's really great. And, you know, you can't go back and have a new big beginning. But if you start now, you can have a great ending. Post the uh, event, one thing that will be changed is I will be more into, uh, I'll start my investments more into mutual funds and also to diversify it. Uh, earlier to this, I was thinking in which mutual funds to invest. So the best thing is that there is a diversified mutual fund. So we can always invest into that fund and uh, on 
a good amount of returns so i think that will uh, change so i still have to do a lot of homework on uh, which which uh, which would be uh, what investment would be good for me but um, but i'm definitely going to start investing now and i feel like i know more about the importance of uh, why we should be starting early more than anything so i'm going to start investing now Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.